This is not just another golf podcast. This is Golf Underground. This is Golf Golf Underground. Underground. We just happen to be the third funniest podcast in golf. We interview PGA Tour pros, Hall of Fame athletes, rock stars, business leaders. Sure, we talk about golf, but we have fun. All right, let's do it. Welcome Welcome to to Golf Golf Underground. Underground. Now your hosts, Wardo, Sully, and and MLB MLB Hall of Famer, Famer, George George Brett. Brett. Thanks for joining the Golf Underground. Now, the Golf Underground is brought to you by Star Companies, KC. Experience a more energy-efficient and comfortable home with Star's insulation services. Regain functional medicine. Feel better, function better, move better, and look better. Regal Distributing. Specializing in the distribution of food service and professional cleaning supplies to a variety of industries. Cowell Insurance. Providing brokerage and risk management services for over 25 years. Sano Orthopedics, care plans backed by research and clinical results tailored perfectly to individual needs. Bob Sight Ford and Bob Sight Independence Kia, where you'll score a double eagle on your next car or truck. Sheridan's Unforked, eating good and feeling good. Lewisburg Ford, nobody sells more F 150s than Lewisburg Ford. And Celebrity Greens, put a custom PGA caliber putting green in your backyard for the ultimate golf experience. Now, onto the program. Hey, welcome to Golf Underground ESPN Radio. Here we are back in the stable with a new setup, Wardo. I like it. You were out there teaching, you know, some, you know, six-year-olds and you know, taking their cash, probably not really helping them. <laughs> and uh, I was in here rearranging things. And, and what do you think of the new uh, new digs? You know, like watch the digs. this. Watch the camera angles. I know we get to look. If you had two chins, that'd be an issue, but it really isn't. I like it. Oh, it's Solid. Nice. You got yeah. Pebble going on in the background. Look at this. Yeah, right in the background. I mean, they must be paying Pebble. you a lot. Look at this. Pebbleach.com. Hey, we got a fun day. Of course, we were heading into the holidays, and um, you know, we had an option this week. George said that we could possibly get John Daly on, right? Wasn't he our yeah. was our first yep. take? And um, I figured, you know, the holidays means family, you know, friends and family gather around. And so many of our young little champions have gone off to college and here they are doing amazing things. And um, I thought of this guy, Carter Selzer. And um, of course I was watching Purdue, Michigan last week. And and I said, what a story. We got a local boy who I used to coach in lacrosse back in the day. And now here he is yet another national championship. I think he's going to be playing in after you smoke TCU. So Carter Selzer, Rockers high school alum, uh, 17th year senior at <laughs> Michigan State. Michigan, not Michigan, yeah, Michigan State. State. Jesus. So, uh, Carter, thanks for joining us, buddy. Thanks for having me, Coach Sully. Oh, my God. He still calls me coach. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. unbelievable. All right. So, um, first of all, um, where are you right now? Because, you know, coming up, you got TCU and the Fiesta Bowl, right? Fiesta Bowl. That's right. All right, so you're going to be heading out to um, Arizona. And so, like, w- w- I'm curious, what do guys like you do? Because classes, finals are all done. Of course, you're getting your master's now. Like, it, w- w- what what's the day look like? Where, where are you doing this? Yeah, so class is, is winding down right now. We're actually in the middle of finals week. So I've got, you know, a finance and accounting final this week. But I'm on top of that. Uh, so I'm doing this from the academic center, which is a student athlete library. Uh, but the day-to-day right now is is practice and lift or meet every day. Uh, we just came off a week off, so you know we're ready to get after this thing. Really, what's uh, what's practiced and lift mean? Like walk through a day. I know this week's probably a little different, but walk through a day of practice and lifting. What's what's the schedule and times like? Yep. So this mo- uh, this morning we met at eight. We had a we had meetings from eight to nine fifteen. I got ready for practice. You know, tape, dress, that kind of stuff. Practice started at ten. Practice from ten to noon, and I had another meeting from twelve uh, thirty until two and so right. 12, and so then we're, we're done with football for the day at that point get lunch in you whatever and then i had my finance final uh just after that took a quick nap uh, and i got back up here to to work on my accounting stuff so yeah. and come on the golf on the ground come on the golf right. well yeah it's a, well, it's listen, a pretty exciting study break there's no doubt hey, how many other players right now are, are doing a podcast oh 
Oh, I don't know if any are on golf podcasts, that's for sure. You know, they've got. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what special teams uh, guys uh, special are, teams are, are all about. But listen, Har- you- Harbaugh's been trying to come on this show for a long time. And, you know, we said that we're having you yeah. before we're having him. Yeah, Yale Van Dyne has, has um, said that, but we weren't ready for him yet. We had to we had to go through you first because yeah. you are the sheriff, which we'll get to okay. in a minute. But listen, for our uh, regular viewers, all 12 of you, You'll notice that this is not George Brett. This is um, Josh Selzer. He is the Legend. creator Legend. of Carter Selzer. So Carter didn't know I was going to have him on. I, I, I text Josh. I said, listen, the, you know, today's show is going to be a lot about leadership and about, you know, the lessons you've learned and the stuff that you've passed on to folks on your team. The, you know, the little young whippersnappers are now come in. And of course, when you graduated Rockhurst, you looked nothing like you do now. I mean, look, you're like manly. I say, and you've had the stash, but I think you got the stash too early a few years ago. You still look like a baby with the stash, right? Would you agree with me on this? Where get your mic for crying out loud? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. And so, all right. So I, I, I want to get right to it and we'll get to the, um, the bowl games coming up here shortly, but um, your story is really cool. Um, certainly you've been there. You're on your sixth year now, right? That's right. By the way, I was with Jake Sullivan um, the other day and, and he was saying, damn it, I wish I was Carter Selzer because college is so much more fun than the room. <laughs> so you're right. Stick to this as long as you possibly can. Although you've run out of coupons, let's be honest. <laughs> it's been a blast, but we're ready to turn the page. Yeah. Well, okay. Hopefully dad had a good 529 dialed in for Ann Arbor's not cheap from what I hear. I mean, well, you don't have to worry about That's that. right. He's on a full ride. I, I mean, he's, he's, he's well, well taken care of. All right. So, but you're, you've, you've become a little bit of a legend, of course, around the, these parts. Um, people were really excited last year when an article came out and it revealed what your team thinks of you. And I know you're a very humble guy, so you're, you're going to kind of evade this a little bit, but my job is to egg you on and to pull out your, so you're not so humble. The sheriff, you were dubbed the sheriff. And and the, the article was really cool and because it, it talks about your start. So I want you to take us back. You know, you, you graduate Rockhurst High School. Of course, you had some injuries, right? Your, was it yeah. your senior year, right? Yeah, was that the, senior year, yeah. Your junior junior year. And, um, you know, you decided that still I'm going to go for Michigan. So So tell us why Michigan. And you weren't, you know, a five-star recruit, and so you, you had to really work your butt off, and that's, you know, that that's where it all started. So, so you you tell us that. No doubt, yeah. So that that recruiting story was a lot different than most of my other teammates might have had, you know, being recruited all through high school. Uh, the first contact I made with Michigan was the summer going into my senior year. I went up to a camp with Harry Van Dyne, who Yale you, know, you just referenced his son, right? So me and Harry went to the Michigan satellite camp out in the summit. I, and I thought I played well, you know, this, that, and the other thing, but I never heard from him again until after a, a district playoff game in basketball. So, you know, six months pass, I hear nothing from him. And then I get, you know, a few, uh, you know, looks from smaller schools across the country. And then Joe Hastings, a guy from Kansas city DMs me on Twitter and says, Hey, we're interested in having you up for a preferred walk on day. Uh, we've seen your film. Our coaches like what you got. Uh, how would you come on up to, to this day to our, our preferred walk on day? And just so happened to be the day after the big game, the big basketball game against uh, uh, Sean Mission East. So uh, we, we played the Lancers, beat them at, at the Rock. And then me, my dad, and my grandpa all drove up through the night to this preferred walk-on day where they show us around the facilities. We meet the coaches. They weigh us in. They, they check our height, weight, that kind of thing. Uh, and from there, I was like, you know, this is the place I really want to be. You know, I, I could see myself spending four or five or six years here. So <laughs> <laughs> words never, never spoken. <laughs> uh, we, we thought four, but <laughs> yeah. all right. So, so uh, tell us about that. So when you showed up, were you intimidated? Because again, you could have picked something a little smaller and you said, screw it. Let me go for Michigan. You know, uh, Showing up, I, I I thought I was ready to rumble. I was I was ready to work hard, and you know that wasn't probably enough. You know, there's there's a lot more to it than just working hard. Everyone here, it was the hardest worker on their high school team. There's no way around that. So, to carve out a niche as a hard worker here is is a whole another level. So, you know, my first summer showing up, uh, I was you know 210 pounds, and now I'm 250, right? So I'm about at the weight I need to be. But at 210, six eight, 210, I'm way undersized. I'm not nearly as strong as a lot of these guys. You know the Quiddy Pays or the Aiden Hutchinsons or anyone who shows up and, and dominates from day one. 
Uh, so that was a little overwhelming, right? The first practice I'm in, it's seven on seven. It's not supposed to be tackled, but there's a there's a middle linebacker position that people are battling for. So they're all beating up on the, the young freshman tight end. <laughs> no so I catch a ball coming across the middle, you know, and get popped a couple of times and hang on to the ball, you know, so I, I know I can I can play here. But, you know, I, I it was it was definitely a little shock showing up. Uh, but I had, a, you know, I had some buddies that year that, you know, everyone's going through it at the same time. You know, we can all get through this and turn out to turn out to be champions. Those who stay right. Those who stay will be champions. So that's kind yeah. of the uh, the mantra that we all we all abided by the, those first few months and took a while, but it, it's panned out. Did, did you have to make the team at that point? Yeah, uh, loosely. So in a camp roster, you only get 110 guys roughly. And our, our roster is 130 guys. So there are 20 guys, 20 guys who might be practicing now that weren't practicing uh, at the beginning of camp. So when you're getting real looks from your coaches, when you're running your own offense, uh, there are plenty of guys, guys older than me, that weren't in that camp. Um, and I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I showed up. So yeah, I had to I had to try out you know through the summer and the tape that I put on film uh, from high school got me into camp uh, ahead of you know guys that might have been here already. Wow. So you know yeah. it's happened to some of my buddies, happened to some of my roommates where they don't make that camp roster, and so they're not really with the team. Uh, so I thought it, was, it is a pretty big deal to have made camp as a walk on freshman. That was that was you know the first taste of oh man this place is cutthroat. Wow, it's not just you know at Rockers everyone travels to every game. You know, they've got, you know, everyone's in their pads, that kind of thing. It's, you know, it wasn't the same. So that was really the first eye-opening experience was not everyone's not everyone's going to make it. Gosh, unbelievable. So what was it like the first time you walked into the stadium? With oh, all man, the something on the, yeah, no, I'll never forget that. Uh, the first time we had in the stadium was was unreal. You know, the big house seats 110,000, and, and it's huge. It is unreal. It's the mecca of college football, right? So to come from, you know, I don't know, high school football to that for anybody is a shock. But but when it filled up on that first Saturday, right, I got to go through and run and touch the banner. That was something I'll never forget. And I'll never take for granted, really. I mean, I'm done with them now. I can't touch the banner any more times. But, you know, oh. every one of them was a blessing. Each one of them. So, guys, that, that is so cool. So talk talk what it's like to play for Har- Harbaugh. Obviously, he's a legend. And, um, you know, what are, what are some of the biggest uh, lessons he's taught you over the years? Yeah, he's a great coach and, you know, he'll do anything it takes to win. And, you know, a lot of people might see stuff that, you know, gets into the media kind of funny or something like that, but it all makes sense when you're here, right? When you're in the building, you, there's a, you can see exactly why he's doing everything he's doing. And it's to help Michigan win. There's, there's nothing that he won't do. So, uh, you know, the dedication, the perseverance and, and trusting the process, right, really are the three big things that, that he's instilled in our team. All right. So um, at any point, you reference his old Chicago Bear days when they would call him Harbaugh. Because <laughs> he absolutely Harbaugh had some times. You know, he was Not good. Quite, he wasn't great. He, he yeah. was more of Matt Castle that era, might I say. <laughs> yeah. You make it 14 years in the league, you're doing something right. You know, so, yeah, you know, he's, he's been it fine. All right, so um, I think we'll, we'll all agree that, um, you know, you weren't the starting tight end over a f- six-year period. No. And uh, so, so it, 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 and you know, Wikipedia says that you caught, I believe, five balls that were all pulled back for penalties. Right, and yeah. so um, I thought against Purdue, and of course, you know, we're watching you. They set that play up for you, didn't they? Sure did. when, they, yeah. when he swept right and there was two of you coming out and God, you were open for like a split second and they yeah. threw to the other guy. I was, ah, yeah, they, the Purdue put, you know, two guys on me cause I was butt naked in the flat there. And then, you know, that was, that was the play, right? If the two guys on me dump it off the skin. So, you know, we scored points. That's all that matters. Right. Came out with the dub. I'm as happy as, as could be, you know, being a part of something that puts points on the board. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm sure you was still driving. See, there you go, saying the nice. See, I mean, you'd be, be you'd be good slash horrible at an NFL press conference. By the way, <laughs> okay, you know, your company life. You're gonna be a hell of an employee somewhere. I will tell you that. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so um, you you said that every guy who comes into Michigan had an unbelievable work ethic, and of course, some maybe already were six eight, but they were running four fours or you know athletically there were certainly guys who were who were better than you so you have these guys who not only have great work ethic but they are amazingly gifted yet you created this this little brand for yourself not on purpose 
but you were dubbed the sheriff, right? And again, that article came out in one of the Michigan uh, papers, giving some insight to, to who you are. And, and I think it's because it's a story that everyone loves. Everyone loves the work ethic. Everyone, everyone loves to, to root for somebody who will keep busting their ass and keep waiting for the door to open. And when it opens, it, great things happen. Maybe it doesn't always work out exactly the same, right? You're not catching the pass or whatever. Um, but people love that story. So, you know, the, the words that Harbaugh would use for you are, you know, selfless, certainly hardworking. You know, I mean, he has a just a ton of accolades. But the sheriff brand really hit. Who who started calling you the sheriff? That was Jay Harbaugh, my position coach at the time. So coach coach's son uh, was my position coach. He's a special team coordinator. And I was working with him. Uh, over the summer so it started as i was the long arm of the law right so in spring ball i hit a guy with a, a pretty mean stiff arm put him in the ground all that stuff but uh those are out a lot of practice now actually can't stiff arm because it's not safe whatever i didn't hurt anybody but they're not safe and but i was the long arm of the law from then on and then over the summer i started growing my hair back out had the mullet i had the mustache <laughs> and i was working at a bar up here called good time charlie's and so once <laughs> once my position coach heard that yeah, I was I was the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> like the redneck sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, right what were you but, doing at the bar? Yeah. Bouncing or what? Yeah, I was bouncing, doing anything they needed, but yeah, I was bouncing. I mean six eight, two fifty now. With a mullet, a stash. I'm envisioning a little police helmet, a little Fuck police it. uh <laughs> police hat. Well Mort Morgan Wallen. Yeah. Well, let, let me take you back to um I mean, the early days when I coached Carter in youth lacrosse, and of course he was the tallest kid on the, on the bill. Cause dad's pretty tall, right? By the, by the way, it, um, we'll talk about a, his golf prowess uh, shortly. And I want to hear if you're, if you ever have time to golf too, but so Carter was uh, one of our defensemen, but you were a skinny, tall guy. And of course you were one of those guys. You, normally when you shoot up really quick, you kind of stop. You, you just freaking kept going. Kept going. Right? Yeah. You were like a freak. But I think it made it really hard for your tall ass body to bend over and pick up a damn ground ball. Sure. And I was and, more of a clear and, guy than a ball guy. <laughs> you were the clear guy. <laughs> so he'd have clear. this big you had these big long arms with this big long stick. Carter scooped this thing up. He's running down the field. But he was always, even on the field, was like the nicest little boy. Right? Yeah. Meaning it, you're right, he would. He might jaw with somebody and get all at it, but then he'd be like, hey, are things okay? Like, you could? Like, he, he'd make all nicey-nice with everyone. You always had this, like, really warm, um, you know, I, I won't call it passive because, you know, when 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 the plays are going on, you were, you were – but you were always this sort of old soul. Right? And, and and you, you talked to this a little bit, right? Because he's your oldest. Well, and- I, I think some of that's grown out. Um, over the past five or six years, I've, I've seen more of the aggression come out. But yes, uh, he, he he definitely has a way of of um, mending fences within our family for sure. <laughs> he keeps the peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, how many brothers and sisters do you have, Carter? Yeah, I'm the oldest of five. Got two brothers and two sisters. So yeah. babysitting, you know that kind of stuff. You gotta you gotta settle arguments and get kids to bed. So you can pick yeah. the easy way or the hard way. And I didn't want to get upset over you know over what they were doing. So I think that's kind of helped my form, my demeanor. The sheriff. He's a she here. Yeah, he's the sheriff, sheriff of the house. in town. Yeah. Listen, he hasn't been back for the holidays in a long time. Cause they're always in freaking bowl games. So he, you know, he can't, he can't do this at the uh, Christmas Eve table. Of course you haven't been around either. Cause you've been traveling with him. It's been a good two years. The last two years have been a lot of fun football to watch. A lot of fun. Oh my God. All right. Let's do this. Let, let, let's take a short commercial break. We come back. I, I want to dig a little bit more into this. And, and I, I want, bit, because what's always interesting to me, first of all, there's nothing more fun for someone our age to see our kids become this, right? It's like, you know, Jake in the real world. And, 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 and I just think it's so awesome, but ultimately the goal of a parent as much fun as you are having watching this journey and, and, you know, go into these amazing events and getting inside the Michigan team. It's your goal is to create a a leader, right? Create a man. And so I want to know what you think of the verdict. And then I want to be specific about, um, you know, what are some of the things that you would teach others? Cause you're teaching these rookies, right? So it starts with pops, 
Then the keys get handed off to every coach, the coaches at Rockhurst, right? The coaches at, at and, and you learn a boatload of stuff, but the goal is to, to come out this thing as a dad to say, he's ready, man, he's ready. And I want to learn about the lessons and the biggest people who've influenced your life. So come on back here on the Golf Underground, ESPN Radio. Guys, as the male body ages, testosterone levels steadily decline, and your body's become increasingly unable to produce healthy levels of the primary male hormone testosterone. At Regain Functional Medicine, we can help you regain your quality of life with testosterone replacement therapy. TRT improves brain function, sleep cycles, heart health, performance, and overall body composition so you can feel better, function better, move better, and look better. Visit us today at ifeelmuchbetter.com. Regain Functional Medicine with locations in Lawrence and Leewood. Regain is better. Hey, Brian Sullivan here, and I've got a tip for you. You've got to head to Unforked. It's an amazing restaurant. What I like about these guys is they promise to buy and support seasonal local ingredients first. And I love the fact that they source from smaller, family, GAP certified, or organic farms, prime going regions, artisan producers. All I'm getting at is if you like fresh stuff, Unforked is the place to be. And like they say it, fork or no fork, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality, socially responsible ingredients possible. And not to mention, it's delicious. So whether you're out south or downtown, stop by Unforked for a delicious and healthy meal. Sheridan's Unforked, honest, clean food. Cowell Insurance Services is your leading program administrator for workers' compensation. They're dedicated to meeting the unique challenges of the insurance industry and assisting employers in reducing their costs. CIS has provided insurance claim and loss control services to various industries, including trucking, construction, retail convenience stores, and healthcare, as well as public entities for over 30 years. They work with both retail agents and industry clients, or a combination of the two. If you're tired of fighting the rising costs of premiums and claims, give Cowell Insurance Services a call. Their dedicated staff is ready to find you the best insurance option at the most competitive price. They can help to define or enhance your safety program in order to move you in the right direction in reducing your claim and premium costs. Contact Cowell Insurance Services today, 816-214-4070. Hey, Brian Sullivan from the Golf Underground here with a little good news. And that good news is that even double-digit handicappers like me can occasionally make a double eagle. All right, maybe not on a golf course, but even guys like me can score when buying a new car or truck. I'm talking about two stores, two brothers, and four generations, treating customers just like family. I'm talking about our buddies at Bobsite Ford and Bobsite Independence Kia. With these guys, you'll always score two under with double the inventory and double the customer satisfaction. That's the Bobsite Double Eagle. Now, Bobsite offers a wide selection of vehicles and promise to make the car buying process as quick and as hassle-free as possible. Now, whether you have poor credit, no credit, or maybe a first-time car buyer, you can trust Bobsite Ford. And Bobsite Independence Kia will get you into the car or truck you choose with professionalism and attention to your needs. So go visit our buddies at Bobsite.com, but only if you're looking for a vehicle that makes you feel like a U.S. Open champion. Hey, welcome back off underground ESPN radio back in the stable. We're having a great time with Carter Selzer. He is the, um, he's the sheriff of, uh, university of Michigan Wolverines football team. We'll be playing the TCU team coming up. Um, is that this weekend? The TCU horn frogs. Is that this weekend? No, no. that's the uh, new year's new, new year's, year's Eve, new, new year's Eve. Eve. And then, and then what do you wait a week for the, uh, for the, the national okay. championship? So right. speaking of national championship, what are your thoughts on this uh, motion to maybe expand the playoff and ha- get, what is it, 12 teams in now? Yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts on them. Um, I think it makes sense to expand the playoff, but you got to do away with some of the regular season games or the conference championship games. Uh, just playing 15, 16 games a year and balancing school on top of that, it, that's a lot. Um, I understand there's a lot of TV money, in it, but uh, – you know, this isn't a year I would, I would I would argue that an expansion of the CFP makes any sense. To me, really, this feels like a, a year that the BCS would make more sense, right? Where there's two top teams almost. I know TC's undefeated, but so, I mean, Ooh, I know, they're they're but, a little conceited, but no, they're not. I, I, yeah, I might be, no, they're but, not. <laughs> listen, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know that, you know, 12 teams really deserve a shot at it, but it's the only level of football, right, where you don't have a playoff like that. All the way from grade school, you got the playoffs, right? Everyone's in the playoffs, or everyone that is a, meets a certain benchmark is in the playoffs. Uh, and the, and the pros, you know, you got teams going just barely 500 that make the playoffs. So, yeah, 
I think I think it makes sense to expand the playoff just a little bit uh, and give m- maybe more teams a uh, shot at winning a natty. So yeah, you got to. So what do you do? Do you get, do you get away? Give a do away with the conference championship, and then in order to have less games or ha- play a condensed regular season. Yeah, I think I think you make it is a, a, maybe a little too much, but I think you get eight power conferences. You shrink the size of your your conference. So you play everyone in the conference. No 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 championship game. The winner is just a regular season champion, right? So every game matters. The winners get an automatic bid, and then you know maybe the second place team too. Or sixteen it. teams. You get sixteen teams. You know it, it works. So. See, it's I think uh, your first rivalry. answer was you, you don't really think they should change it. It's because of the position that Michigan's in, and uh, you know, so I mean, I, we'd, we'd end up we'd end up probably where we are regardless, right? I mean, that, that, there isn't so much. I don't know. I, I think I think it makes sense to expand it a little bit, but not. It, it, you'd have to redo a lot of stuff, and to redo the conferences, like I'm saying, you'd mess with rivalries, traditions, this and that. So that, that's yeah. that's a whole you know Pandora's box and. Yeah, because that last weekend is always the, the rivalry games, yeah. right? Everywhere. Yeah, yeah so you'd, you'd mess with that. All right, t- tell us something that um, the regular Joe doesn't know about playing Division One college football, right? So, so, you know, stuff that after living it, of course, it's probably so ingrained in you, you, you it'd be tough for you to answer the question, but um, – you know, this is what happens in the locker room or this is what the meetings are like. Like, you know, give us some insight because people have no clue. All we do is turn on ESPN game day on Saturday morning. And we wonder, you know, that seems really cool, but I have no idea. Uh, I, I was shocked to hear this, but a lot of people don't understand how much practice goes into playing a game. Uh, there are people that I go to school with, not obviously not on the football team, but that are shocked that we practice at all. They're like, oh, I thought you guys just showed up on Saturdays. <laughs> threw the ball around. And I'm amazed that they got into Michigan, but you know what? That's you know a different story for another time. But really, the amount of hours that that go into football outside of the fall, right? So in the winter, you're conditioning, you're lifting, you're meeting, you're doing walkthroughs, a lot of player led stuff, right? Uh, goes into it. So team led, you know, you got your captains and your older guys bringing guys along to do individual workouts. Um, there, there's a lot of, that goes into it, and a lot of it is not with the head coach's supervision. A lot of it is you spend most of your time with your head strength coach, right? You spend the whole winter, summer, and spring with the guy. And then a lot of it is also self-directed, right? So if you want to get ahead of your competition, you can't just practice when the team has practice. And and that goes for teams too, right? Teams can't just practice when every other team is practicing. Uh, You won't get that much better than anybody else. So you have to take it upon yourself to take – to, to practice on your own uh, and yeah, and get that organized and get, get that ball rolling. So in those locker rooms, you've got all these five-star athletes coming in and, and no doubt you've seen over the years, some egos, right? Some real studs. My guess is most often it's from the position or the, uh, the speed positions, right? That would be the thought. You know, the the lumpy coming in from the Catholic high school in Toledo since he was an offensive lineman probably isn't stirring the pot a lot, right? You know, Uh, you got different guys in every position group. Uh, I I really think every guy is their own guy. You can't generalize just by position group. There are maybe the egos in those rooms are bigger, uh, but there there are guys like that in every room. All right. Not so mine, uh, actually not mine this year, but th- that's, that's not always the case. So when a freshman comes in and they're just cocky as hell, um, you've, you've got to, you've seen those. How do you slap them back? Uh, that will get handled on the field. I mean, you get <laughs> very quickly with how physical our practices are. You have a lot, a lot to learn. So it, there's nothing personal about it. It happens to everybody. You know, you, everyone gets humbled. Um, and most people don't really need a talking to They'll, they'll show up those first practices and, really understand how, how far they have to go before they're ready to play. And, and that humbles a lot of guys quickly. Do you have any good stories of a guy who came in and he, you know, he was cocky as hell and, you know, a few practices in it, all of a sudden he came, he became a, like mother Teresa because he was, <laughs> he was a little humbled. I don't know. Um, you know, we've had some guys, you know, get after it and fight and stuff like that, but I mean, it, it's it's not anyone in particular, really. Uh, 
the the freshman class as a whole almost develops this, their whole their the same attitude, right? Either they all come in and they're all, oh, we're gonna take this place over, we're gonna do it like our yeah. way. And then the first practice comes and it's like, all right, they look up again, they're like, all right, how can you help me get to where I need to be? Or, or yeah, how do I fall in line? How do I get it so coaches off my ass? That kind of thing. Yep. Um, you know, very rarely do individual guys stick out. And when they do, they don't really last long here. Right, right. So Bill Self has always been known. I obviously basketball's a a lot less players on the team, but you know, he might pick out one guy for the good majority of the season or leading into the season and pick on him a little bit or ride him. What does Harbaugh do to help maybe get the guy that has a ton of talent um, to get better and to ride him? What are, what are some of his tactics there? Yeah. He doesn't, really care who's making the play as long as it meets a certain standard. He tells everybody on the team that they have the same license. They have the same, you know, right to the playing time and and to earn a role. So it doesn't matter if you're a five-star coming in or a walk-on. If you can do the job, you're going to do the job. And so maybe, you know, guys will – he'll give guys uh, a little bit extra freedom, you know, or, or run more plays or call for more plays for certain guys. But that's only after they've proven that they can do it. Once – to get your foot in the door, it, it – it doesn't matter who you are. You have to meet the same standard. So uh, with today, Mike Leach passed away, right? Speaking of great college coaches, I mean, wild. 62. We're getting close there. <laughs> it sells it, right? so. No, but it's wild. You know, you, you think about like, like, all right, I'm like, I got a few on you. <laughs> well, well, I don't know about that. Ask your play from the four teaser. <laughs> <laughs> with the red, with the red flag, right? But it's, you know, it, it, again, you think a guy like that dies at 62, 61, whatever he was, he left a left a, a great legacy. And I, I would think guys like Har- Harbaugh or, or Mike Leach, you know, you, you hope that they had time to understand the number of people they impacted. Like coaching is just an awesome profession, right? I mean, think about Harbaugh, whether it was NFL or, or you know, uh, coaching or, um, you know, the sport of football gave him so many friendships but so many opportunities to change the outcome and existence of um of their lives right what would your life be do you think had you not you're not only with harbaugh but if you didn't get the opportunity to be around the great coaching staff at michigan because certainly they taught you how to play the position and work hard and read the playbook, but they had to give you more. I want you to make like you showed up on that first day and you said, this is not for me. What kind of man are you versus the man you are now? Or coach Sev. Right. Yeah. yeah right. I think, right. I think some of the lessons that I've learned really are the one that's really etched into my brain is you can't just work on days. You feel like it, right. You can't just work hard on days where you feel hundred percent. We don't have bumps and bruises. Cause then you'd never work. Right. Then you, you're waiting for that time and it never comes. So uh, that kind of the, the hard work, right. That we referenced before. And then, uh, another one is just like the love for, you know, your teammates. I think that's something that that's been, that's probably shared across all team sports, but really in football, it's the most, right. I think that the brotherhood that I've formed at Rockhurst and with my teammates here is, is something that's really changed me for the rest of my life. And, and I'll, I'll be grateful for that really forever. Yeah. Well, and you brought up coach Sev, right. Um, what do you, what role do you think he played? Because again, getting back to before the commercial break, I said the greatest gift that we hope we give our kids is the ability to become men when they're men. Um, but we're not always rewarded, but when you see Carter or, you know, certainly I get a chance to see Jake, so many of the rockers, all your buddies, right. Think about it. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, you're just a great freaking crew of men now. Um, what, what do you think you did to help mold this? Like, what, what did you try to do? Well, I, I think the, the key is with, with, um, you know, young men and women is, putting them in a position where, you know, they're around people that know they care um, you know, to just try to have them try their best and don't give up. I mean, there, there can be a lot of situations where it's easy just to shut it down. And you've had the, you've had the benefit of some great coaches. I mean, coach Sully might've, might've been the, 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 <laughs> the anomaly, <laughs> but, but, but Co- coach Sav was a great leader of men. You're not going to find many people, in any coaching profession that can motivate better than a coach Severino. Right. Um, and so you know, I, I do think it's, it's really important to be around P 
people that are going to commit to as much work as you're going to do. Um, even if your reward might be different than what theirs is because everybody at Michigan doesn't sign $2 million NIL deals or play in the NFL yet all those other teammates have to work just as hard as the guys that do. So, um, you know, and some of it is, you know, it, it's not the parents because you can raise five kids the same way and yeah, they're all they different. all, they all end up different. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's true. Well, but I think um, certainly you, um, you had a lot to do with it because we've all been around you've been around this Carter, right? Where whether it was at Rockhurst or even before Rockhurst, it's probably, I guess is even at Michigan where, you, you know, you have different breeds of parents. Some are just, you know, their goal was to mold that tight end who will be fantastic. <laughs> right. And I, I will go to the, you know, yeah, there's the cheese ball. There's the, you know, like the guy who's on, um, well, there's like the, the Al Bundy types, and then there's some who I think where your dad did did well say, hey, we're going to lay a framework out. I'm going to always support you. But hard work will kind of be the foundation of all of this. And the formula is really simple. It, 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 you outwork everybody. There's two ways you, you do it. You either outwork everybody or maybe you don't work that hard, but you're so damn athletic or in business. You're so damn smart that you can get away without outworking a lot, a lot. But the way to be a champion is to outwork everyone and then do everything you can to have more skill and knowledge than they do, right? Because if you work on those two things, which you have total control over, you're going to be in the top percentage, right? No doubt. No doubt. That's something that, yeah, you see guys here, back what we were talking about with, you know, five stars versus walk-ons, maybe seeing the field. It's the guys that work the hardest really make the field. They, they play the most, so. It helps when you have the most athletic ability, right? Because it just it compounds a little faster when you're working just as hard. But right, right. The hardest workers are the guys who help win games. Right. Hey, um, th- have you ever been compared to Rudy? And does it drive you freaking nuts? <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. You haven't. He's the sheriff. I've, not, I've never been on kickoff, you know. So no. Would it be an insult if someone called you Rudy? Maybe a little bit. Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not to disparage the guy, but I feel like he was almost like a make-a-wish guy. Like, you know, like, oh, he's <laughs> the to, like, I mean, and he worked hard, of course. And he, you know, he, he reached his goal, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're no Rudy, but I had to throw that out there. Right. The lumpy <laughs> little guy that was like putting a helmet on me and saying, go play for TCU for a play. <laughs> such a good movie. All right, but but let's get back to the, answering the, the the question I had. Had you not played those um, at Michigan, how do you think your life would be different? Um, I'd probably be done with school by now, uh, or maybe and maybe in med school. I don't know. Um, I, I don't really know what I'd be doing right now. There's nothing I'd really rather be doing. I love playing football up here, and, and I'm enjoying my studies right now. Um, but without football, I don't know what I'd be doing. Probably, you know, that's hard to think. I haven't really thought about it. I don't have any regrets about playing ball this long or anything like that. So I really don't think about it. I don't know. If you had the mullet and the mustache though, you'd have options. Like you can be a bartender <laughs> at Key West. <laughs> I mean, Key West. did you ever just think, you know what, like when you're in that weight room, you're all sweaty and you're, you're all, like, screw this. I'm going to head down to Key West. Sometimes, maybe. Yeah, Car- so Car- you have yeah. Michigan has given you some opportunities to travel. Maybe, maybe tell these guys about a couple of the the trips yeah, that Michigan and absolutely those Harbaugh really has arranged. Incredible, once in a lifetime, really. I mean, my freshman year, we went to Paris. So, as a team, you know, right after spring ball ended, right after finals, took the whole team over to Paris, and we got to see, you know, the uh, the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower. We got to eat all these great restaurants. Then we drove up to Normandy. We did a tour, you know, huh. the D-Day, all that kind of stuff. And it was really profound. It was really impactful. I, I, that, that trip was awesome. Um, and when we do these trips, you know, they do everything to the nth degree because we have some great donors and they want us to experience the culture, you know, as well as we can. Need some of those sponsors for, for <laughs> the golf underground. <laughs> yeah, I, I think some of them golf, but. What about the South Africa trip? The, and the second year or, yeah, you know, we went to South Africa. So after my sophomore year, the whole team, again, right after spring ball, right after finals, got on a plane, head down to South, a- South Africa. We did Johannesburg and Cape Town. We stayed on wow. a safari for three days. That was incredible. That was a trip that, you know, as long as I live, I'll never forget. You know, I played golf down there, right? 
Really? I did. Yeah. I'll, I don't have a picture or readily available, but there was a, there was a mimic course, I guess, of, you know, you, unique par threes all around the world. So they've got the postage stamp and they got uh, TPC 16, maybe at Sawgrass. So, yeah, so 17, 17, yeah. 17, probably 12 17, yeah. Augusta. Yeah. 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 They've got all sorts of these, you know, mo- smaller models of these, these remarkable uh, par threes all around the world and put it on one course and I got to play it. It was, it was pretty special. That's cool. That they, I had no idea. They, did, did, is that a, like a, do they do that in, in college? Is that a regular thing? What Michigan's you- really the only school this year. We went around the state of Michigan, which was pretty cool. Just seeing, you know, how much the Michigan, football team means to the the community here i think that was pretty profound too that was that was awesome that's that's where you got deputized (laughs) that's right you got my oh you got your sheriff badge yeah let me see it let's see is that a yeah oh (laughs) he's like Shaq. yeah i've been sworn to uphold and protect the constitution of the state of michigan in the united states so (laughs) i will do what i have to I will do what I have to to see that that gets done. I is, love it. Is there is there any like little um like like little speech you, you give like I promise to protect the people of uh, May, May Mayberry or like what? Yeah, I mean, I, he's got a video. You My dad got, got a video of it. But <laughs> I got sworn in by by Sheriff Chris Swanson, who we who's come to speak to our team a few times. He runs a program called the Ignite Program, which is really special. You guys should look into it if you get the chance. Um, but yeah, that was it. We just went up for a day of, of service during that trip, and I got deputized. That's <laughs> 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 so. Oh my god, that is fun. But I think that's that's cool that because you can get caught in four years of football, um, where it's all you do, right? And so I suppose, I mean, what a smart thing to say. These kids have to learn outside of this discipline, you know, and this bond that they're doing. That there's a, there's lessons to be learned outside. I bet Normandy had to be really cool, right? Just from a leadership. But does he, when he goes to a place like that, does he talk at all? Like, does he say, guys, here's a lesson. And I guess my mind immediately goes to, um, what was it? Remember the Titans, right? Where um, Denzel Washington and they're in Gettysburg. In fact, that, you know, the movie was filmed on the, on the uh, Gettysburg college where I went and, you know, he gathers them all around or like, um, what was the other one? Um, um, What's the what's the school? Where all, they all died in a plane wreck. Um, Kent, so, oh, the Marshall. Uh, Marshall. 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 We are Marshall, right? You imagine, you know, here's lesson to be learned. Here's where we are. Does he do any of that, or it's just you know, made for normally, TV? Normally, when we're at the at the site, he lets the tour guides, you know, the people that know the history, say it. But once we get back as a team, he'll reference, you know, the bonds that those soldiers might have shared, or or that kind of thing, in speeches when he addresses the team later. So he he will talk about. Oh, we're going to check this out and that out, and maybe a basic overview. But the real insightful stuff he'll he'll address later down the road. That's that's cool. cool. How would you describe him in a, a pregame speech to you? Yeah, uh, everything's about playing as hard as you can, as long as you can, as fast as you can, and not worrying. So that's how he finishes every pregame speech. You know, it. Some are some are. We've got to do this. We've got to do this. Some are. A little more motivational or storytelling, you know, you know, about boxers from years past or allegories from the Bible, maybe, but they all end with play as hard as you can, as long as you can, as fast as you can, and don't worry. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, have you ever tried a Harbaugh? Actually, uh, that sounds like Sullivan's golf game. Get as many as you can. <laughs> Drink as many as you can. <laughs> Lose as much as you can. <laughs> and then I usually hear from you. Hammer Bring a lot of golf hammer. balls. <laughs> Bring a lot of golf balls. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. That's real. No. So, um, all right. So can you do a Harbaugh impersonation? I'd rather not. Not. Oh, I'm not very good at them. I've got, you know, I've got buddies that can and, you know, some, Coaches can, but I, I can't. Yeah, that's that's fine. pretty unique mannerisms, and I, I couldn't even try. Does he scare um, players? Because he's pretty. I mean, he's got a. He's been around a long time, and and he he's got some street cred. That man, like I, like how do you go up to a guy like that? He, obviously, you you've got a, an edge because you you've built a you know a real respect. You've earned his respect. But is there still this aura like there's Coach Harbaugh, right? Or is it you just becomes your coach? Uh, 
there's always, I think, that respect for him of what he's done in the in the game previously, but also as a coach. Uh, he used to be a little more of a of a am after, you know, getting after guys for doing this or that. But he's come a long way, I think, in like how he addresses guys, how much he fosters like love in the building, like how much we love each other, love the game, love our coaches, our coaches love us. It's it's really great. It's really something special now. It's a great thing to be a part of. And you've got a chance to spend a little time with him, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, he's not, we're not, you know, talking yeah. once a month or, yeah. or so, but like Yale, of course, yeah. Yale, like, you know, yeah. it's, uh, but Yale's in the team room before. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> but, but, but he, but he, he's, he's in Kansas city enough that, you know, he'll, he'll reach out and just touch base if he's in town. And why does he come to town? Um, wow. His wife's from Kansas city. Oh, really? Yep. And so, yeah, we we uh, he was in town for a wedding this this summer, and we he came in town, and we actually took him out and played golf at Wolf Creek with Carter and Coach. Oh, nice! It was a good time. He 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 strikes it well. He got yeah, on he, uh, he got on, got on fifteen and two, solid Par five, solid, solid second shot. So he can play, and those were with just rental clubs. So he he likes to he likes to get he'll compete. He's not hitting five woods from one fifty like you, but. Hey, hey, listen, I choked down. Him. That's a so This was down. years ago, but since his wife's from here, I think this was when KU ended up hiring Turner Gill. We, I think we had Harbaugh, Harbaugh set no. to come. And Why would he you? want, no, here's what happened. He wanted to coach the bowl game at Stanford in which Lou Perkins said, no, you're, you're not coaching. You're coming oh. here now. And he said, I'm out. That's true. Is it really? Yep. That's true. Idiot. He really would have come to <laughs> Kansas? <laughs> hey, watch it. No, I They're mean, okay now. They're good. Yeah, yeah, I know they are. Back. But back then, they weren't. That wasn't, well, maybe it was immediately after. Um, well, this was shortly there. This was shortly after the Mangina run. So, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, so they still had hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That is true. I mean, so, yeah, he, he, he has a special place. Uh, it's hard for Kansas City, so he he makes his way back here. Maybe a future time, you guys would get him on the show. Well, I mean, it's not going to be you doing. It's going to be Yale, Yale, <laughs> Yale. It's always Yale. <laughs> Yale's got all the connections. Not your dad. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying <laughs> Yale. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Let's let's take a commercial break. Uh, Wardo, I know you're you're not overly prepped here, but I want you to. I dig- got an amazing rapid fire. I want out. you to dig deep for this rapid fire. All right, because what we're going to do is we're going to send Carter away with this juice right through this camera to go kick TCU's ass. And I know there's a lot of local TCU fans here in town. Here's my take. Listen, I <laughs> screw you. Carter's going to kick your ass. All right. It's very, it's very simple. So rapid fire with Wardo sponsored by Sheridan's unforked, eating good, feeling good. They were some, they recently had a little fire, but we're praying for them. Really? Yeah. Well, in it, and it's also sponsored by regain functional medicine. Um, you too can have biceps like Carter Selzer. <laughs> getting testosterone shots slash B12. Every Wednesday. Come on back. You're on a Golf Underground, ESPN Radio. Hey, Brian Sullivan of Golf Underground with my favorite orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Kevin Witte from Sano Orthopedics. Hey, Doc, golf season's over. My back is killing me. I know it's football season, so you got a lot of kids coming in, blown ACLs, all sorts of body parts with problems. And then, of course, those baseball players. I know you fix a lot of elbows. Why is Sano Orthopedics the absolute best sports medicine orthopedic group in Kansas City? Well, if you want to see the guys in town have had the best orthopedic fellowship training in sports medicine, um, including training with Dr. James Andrews and Dr. Larry Lemack, come see us. Uh, We individualize patients' uh, plans to get them back to that activity and that sport that they love. And we actually care and listen to our patients and follow up with them make sure that they're getting the results they need okay and so the three things that separate you number one best training number two you specialize in getting people on that field number three you're actually listen where can i learn more because you got me all in and i don't really want to get fixed but it's time at sonoorthopedics.com 816-525-2840 hi this is george brett hall of fame baseball player and i've been playing golf for over 35 years Hitting the ball far was never my problem, but the closer I got to the greens, that's when my problems began. When I wanted a golf practice area in my backyard, I called Celebrity Greens. They are the industry leader in custom-built synthetic golf greens. These championship caliber, low-maintenance greens roll great, 
react like real bent grass, and hold chip shots that check and spin. I absolutely love mine, not only in Kansas City, but also in Arizona. Call the pros at Celebrity Greens at 1-888-507-7960 or visit them online at CelebrityGreens.com. Practice like the pros or people like me that want to be pros right in your own backyard. Hey, Brian Sullivan, Golf Underground, with a little tip for you. If you're looking to buy a new Ford, you have to check out my buddy, Jason Gudenkoff at Lewisburg Ford. They've been saving Midwest Ford buyers thousands of bucks for over 40 years because they do business the right way. They sell everything. Check this out for $50 over invoice. That's simple and cheap. And they win a lot of awards. In fact, they won Ford's President's Award 17 times. That's the top Ford award. And they only give it to dealers with superior customer satisfaction in sales and service. So they know how to take care of customers better than anybody. Now, what these guys know how to do also, keep this in mind, sell trucks. Lewisburg Ford has sold more F-150s than any other Ford dealership in greater Kansas City. That's two years running. And last year, they were the number one F-150 sales leader in the entire state of Kansas. So, no hassle. $50 over invoice pricing, unparalleled customer satisfaction, and a huge selection. That's a perfect recipe for selling trucks. So, check out all their inventory and prices online at lewisburgford.com. Or give them a call at 816-444-2300. New golf clubs. A big screen TV to watch the U.S. Open? Or maybe even a new golf cart that I've got my eye on? No matter how you choose to spend the savings, if you're looking to put a dent in your monthly heating and cooling bills, the answer may be right over your head. If your attic isn't insulated properly, you're missing out on a prime opportunity to cut costs. Call the certified energy experts at Star Companies, Inc., 816-353-2160 for a free estimate to learn how they can help you save money. 816-353-2160 or visit StarCompaniesKC.com. Welcome back, Golf Underground ESPN Radio. We're with Carter Selzer. Um, he's giving us the lowdown on the upcoming bowl game, the Fiesta Bowl, coming up here um, during the holidays. Be sure to uh, check out the Fiesta Bowl. And, um, you know, we talked a little leadership, talk a little, you know, what it, what it took, the molder, the creator right here, created this great young man. And so, um, but enough of that, because now we're really going to peel things back a little bit with Wardo's famous rapid fire questions now he by the way he doesn't prepare for these he's come right his come. questions are rapid you gotta fire. be as witty as i'm gonna be <laughs> well, all, right. Do it. all right roll them all right if you had to go to one other college other than michigan where would you go tell you hey you great answer if you didn't play for harbaugh who would you play for i would have said mike leach actually but that, yeah he just passed away really good answer the, the number one golf course you want to go play in the world. Augusta. If you had to say Wait, one. Can we stop on that? Yep. Didn't um, didn't you play Augusta? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, w- w- tell the folks what you shot at Augusta. Shot a little sweet little 78. Mm-hmm. Solid. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. Well, I want to start off birdie. Boy. It's a good day. Uh, 15. It was a good, good day. Solid. So that was a Yale hookup. No. <laughs> All, right. All right. So the best athlete you've seen in your six years at Michigan. Oh my God. There's so many Rashawn Gary, Aiden Hutchinson, Quiddy pay, uh, Blake Coram, Hassan Haskins. Like these guys are all crazy good athletes. Like, I mean, if you've heard of them nationally on our team, they're probably unreal athletes. <laughs> The most nervous you've been in a game? Uh, Michigan State 2020. Uh, we were running a pop pass, you know, to me in the end zone and didn't end up catching it. I had to break up the pass, actually. It was, you know, incomplete. They I, they're going to intercept it in the end zone. But right before that play, it was probably the most nervous I'd ever been. Hey, before so, we go to the next question, don't you think you should introduce um, your brother? Oh, yeah. Speaking of pot, he wants to know what a pot pass is. Pop, pop pass. He knows what a pop. He definitely oh. knows pot. Yeah. It's a pot of sauce oh, and a pot. <laughs> <laughs> that's Doughboy, ladies and gentlemen. Say, hey, Carter, that's Doughboy. Hey, Carter. You've, how you've... you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing all right yourself. Doing great. All right, I mean, I mean, do, I mean you, got any, you got any questions for the, Jeez, for the formal? Well, I, got a, I got a microphone here. Um, well, Carter, I was I was actually 
at your parents' house. I don't even know what year it was. Your dad can chime in. And I was over there with your uncle Robert and a few other hooligans. And I remember, I remember your dad saying, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive down to Indianapolis right now. I believe it was Indianapolis. And I'm going to go propose to this girl, Kara. And he got in his car and drove straight down there. I, I have no idea what year it was, but I was watching you two interact down here. It reminded me of that story. That, yeah, that was uh, 98. Yeah, that's right. That was when Robert was in town and drove out to Indianapolis and uh, asked your you know, Karen to, to marry me. Yeah, good. I don't. Yeah. I, that, I feel very feminine right now, but yeah. yes, you that see, happened. That, that, this is uh, this is like. Was, a, was it like over the holidays or around the holiday season yeah. time? Probably was. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Good. Well, start start to interrupt, but it came to my mind yeah. watching the interaction. This is a holiday show. This is what we're talking about: friends and family. We got the children on. That's right. Right. Someone here at the table is like, we have to get in a fight about something. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't like your attitude right now. All right, I got a fight. All right, Ro- Robert. Or, uh... <laughs> I think Carter is going to agree with me. Uh, speaking of fighting, we went. I didn't go to the game because I was gone. But Chris went to the KU MU game with his uh, his good friend Fletch, who's a diehard MU guy. And I saw the line. I was down in Florida. I saw three and a half. I go, why don't I put a used Ford Fusion on this game? <laughs> <laughs> so I proceeded to do so. We beat them by 30. And then I don't know if you saw what Travis Goff, our AD, uh, tweeted that night. He said, our players don't really get nervous in hostile environments. And, you know, it'd be nice to run this back on the foot on the gridiron, but it doesn't sound like they want to play us. So there's <laughs> there's me trying to pick a fight with you. Well, I, I, just, I think you're rude. We brought him on and, and you're throwing this shit out there. <laughs> well, he's a KU fan. That's right. Sure See, that's what I'm saying. Hey, listen, by the way, Carter, tell us about the biggest fight that's ever happened at the Seltzer Thanksgiving Day table. I'm only kidding. All right. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> All right. I got I got two more for you. I got two more for you. How many times have you thrown up in uh, in practice or training in spring ball? Never. They, they're not about punishing us with running or anything like that. No, that, never. And then my last question, your dream foursome. Tiger. Uh, probably it's Ernie tough. Allen. Yeah. You wow. take your time. I can always edit out the silence. Okay. <laughs> I want to play with Michael Jordan. I I don't know. I think that'd be pretty fun. I've heard he's kind of an asshole on the course, but I, it sounds like it'd be a fun play, person to play with. He's not good at paying his bills. Well, you better get a title sponsor to go take that on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, they could be dead to the history. I, yeah, oh, way back. Uh, oh, could be anyone. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. We'll, we'll make it a five some. There was a timer. It would have expired. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. I don't know. Maybe like Elvis or somebody like ancient, like or. I don't know, like someone who's dead now just to bring him back for for a few hours. All right, can I just say something, Carter? We posed yeah. the test. We posed this test, and you just totally failed it. <laughs> it is a big right. fail. I it agree. Is, yeah, you're supposed to reserve that last spot for your father. For my dad, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's molding shit. <laughs> you're talking about Tom Brady. <laughs> He put his microphone down. You should have seen him. He was like this. Like, <laughs> like, you're dropping some elves. He thinks he thinks somebody's ah. wrong. He thinks yeah, somebody's going to be on the bag. He, he was going to be on the bag. Yeah, I he's a looper. Yeah. He's I meant to say that he's the looper in the in the uh, in your Tom Watson uh, bib that I lost. <laughs> All right, that is awesome. Well, listen, we know you've got big things coming up over the next couple of weeks. I will tell you, uh, we are so proud of you. 
And, and I mean, you're a real leader. You've earned, you know, this moniker of sheriff because, you, you know, you, you've got a way of, of making people want to listen to what you say. And that's what, that's, that's what a leader is all about. Cause you're humble, you're a hard worker, you, you study like a, so all these lessons you learn there, my God, you're ready to conquer life. And, and so, but you know, I'm, I know how proud this guy is of you, but, um, you know, we're all proud of you, man. So, so thanks for coming on and sharing a little hometown cooking of, of, of success. Sully, what right? do you say after they uh, drill team TCU, should we uh, maybe hop on a bird and go check out the national championship game? Do you have a bird? So far. <laughs> Not so much. By bird, do you mean Southwest slash Spirit Airlines? Yeah, Spirit Airlines. Yeah, maybe we should maybe we should do this. All right, pops, you got any closing comments to your uh, your boy? Just go blue. Have a great week. <laughs> awesome. You got any like uh, final rah rah for us? Like, hey, fire thank us you guys up? so much for having me on. I just wanted to say I wouldn't be here without my dad. Not not nowhere close to where I am now. Wouldn't be the man I am today without him. Just want to thank you guys again for having me on, and thank you, Dad, for everything. Yeah, awesome. That's solid. How you, right? Yeah, yeah solid, we just made, yeah. did. You see how we just yeah. made up for you know? That's making you a sports. And then just made made it. It. I'm gonna try to sneak in as many. I'm gonna put my. I'll put him on the bag. I'm gonna get as many of those guys in that he wants to meet too. Right? I'm. You know, it's. I was. It's more thoughtful maybe than you guys realized. <laughs> uh, all right god bless carter okay. all right listen, thank so you guys <laughs> happy holidays merry christmas right. thanks take Love care you, take care let's go <laughs> it's, it, you can hang up now all right <laughs> <laughs> what a kid huh what a kid so good i mean the sheriff i'm not lying it's just you, you, you've been living it but it's just so cool yeah. to see these kids you Super know? cool, right and it's fun to uh have a team to root for it's got to be so oh, wild God. I mean, well, unexpected. Yeah, they, they were two and four in 2020. They played yeah. six games. They played, they played six games. That's right. Oh, that's all they played that so year. That, the game where he said he was most nervous that was against Michigan State, and they put him in a tight end, and the guy short armed it. And he had to go up and break it up. But if he would have caught it, Michigan wins the game. Ah, uh, so they lost to Michigan State, and there were only 200 people in the stadium. Oh, because yeah. because it was in COVID, okay. so there were only two hundred people there, and so I've seen. Well, he, he's been through an experience where there were two hundred people at their games. And he's nervous, and then he's that was his most nervous. Yeah, but he's played in one hundred fifteen thousand, and it's fully packed. So he's seen it always. It's pretty neat. Oh my god, that's cool. So, all right, no, like he said, Sully. I mean, Harbaugh was basically that game. I mean, they were. There's people barking to run his ass out the door. Right. I mean, that's yes. that's where that's things true. were at with the yes. program. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Well, what's so weird about that is I think we all thought when Harbaugh came on board, what, six, been six seven, or eight years? Seven. Like, all right, he's just, they're going to win, 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 win. And it's been gradual. Obviously, the COVID year was weird, but I mean, it's fun to watch. Oh, it's been awesome. And he, he does have a Kansas City connection. He recruits KC and has another commit this year. Um, uh, Ronnie Bell's younger brother at Park Hill is going to be up there uh, oh, wow. in the fall. And there's another Rockers kid uh, who we hope goes there, uh, Andrew Sprague. And he's, a, he's an oh, offensive yeah. lineman. Sprague's son, yep. yeah. So I, and he, he's, he's been recruited and offered, so hopefully we can keep a little lineage. That's awesome. Good, Good yeah. Let's um, let these kids go away, be champions, and then come on back and settle back in our little <laughs> home, right? All right, well, listen, I hope you enjoyed family hour at, at the, the golf stable. Next week, we're going to be with my Aunt Fran is flying in from Prospect, Connecticut. We're going to have stories about cranberry sauce and oyster stuffing. You've been listening to the Golf Underground, ESPN Radio. <laughs>